we're back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. We're talking about tech days uh, of spring, tech days of spring at UH. And um, this is uh, different than tech days of fall last year. So it looks like we have at least two tech days programs every year, a multitude of career fairs in Manoa. Um, and it's the intersection of the of the university's offerings, training in technology and related fields uh, with the business community. And I would say the business community is not just the local business community, it includes the military community and, and it includes uh, the mainland business community, who knows what, uh, with uh, Alan Ito, uh, and he runs this uh, there. He's, what, what, what's your title, Alan, at the university? Yeah, it's uh, kind of, uh long cumbersome title is IT Workforce Development and Regulated Policy Lead. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. You're the perfect guy to organize these fairs because you have a, a lifetime in industry and more than that, you have a lifetime in technology and industry. Can you talk about it? Sure. Um, let's see. I'm a graduate of the University of Hawaii. I um got both my undergrad degree. Um, my undergrad is actually in math because when I went to school, there wasn't yet an ICS or information computer science um, degree that you could get. It wasn't a major. Um, and then I have an MBA uh, from the University of Hawaii also. Um, I started off my career uh, working at the UH uh, doing research. So I used the computer uh, to do some statistical analysis. Um, Wanted to get into industry, so went spent a bit of time at Hawaiian Electric. Um, I joined KPMG, uh, which is an accounting consulting firm. I was with them for a while. Um, I was at St. Francis Healthcare System when St. Francis had the two hospitals. I was a chief information officer for them. Um, I did a startup, uh, spent about 10 years in a startup working with healthcare data. Um, I worked with the Hawaii Health Information Exchange, starting up their regional extension center. Um, I was CIO for the state hospital system, uh, CIO for Team Praxis. Um, then my last stint in industry was uh, information security officer for Hawaii Pacific Health. Which is a very, very big organization, which uh, of, of all um, healthcare organizations is heavily dependent on uh, computers and computer processing and programming and so forth. So you're the perfect guy for this. You had a, a foot in every camp, it seems like. So tell us about the program. What What is the um, Tech Days program about? Where is it? How does it work? What's your role in it? Sure. Um, yeah, so the Tech Days, and right now it's Tech Days of Spring, and you're right, We it actually started in 2023 with Tech Days of Spring, 2023, then we had Tech Days of Fall 2023, and now we're in Tech Days of Spring 2024. Um, and it's actually, uh, it came together as a way to try to put some focused attention on um, opportunities and technology for our, our local um, students um, and residents. And um, the way it started out was we were going to have a career fair over at um, UH, and there was another group that was doing a um, talk story with tech pros. Uh, this was Thrive High. So we got together and we said, wow, you know, we're doing it at about the same time. Wouldn't it make sense to try to come together um, and market it and do it together? One of the reasons was to, again, put focus attention on technology as a good career uh, for our next generation. Um, but it was also to try to alleviate all these different asks going to industry. Um, you know, I'm I'm chair also, or I'm not chair now, but I was involved, I'm involved with a group called the CIO Council of Hawaii, which is a group of IT leaders. And we always talked about, yeah, it's you know, really hard because we get to ask from this place and then we get to ask from here. And is it the same thing or is it two different organizations? So we thought if we could somehow coordinate our efforts, um, so, um, industry could go to one place, you know, get information about the different events, sign up in one place. Um, it would also help make it easier for them. So that's how Tech Days started. And um, and then it kind of grew organically as um, people had different events and they said, yeah, sure, you know, we'll put it under the Tech Days umbrella. Um, so while 
The University of Hawaii System and the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii are the primary sponsors. There's a number of different organizations involved in putting on uh, tech days. Each organization kind of runs their own event, but we, we publicize it under the tech days umbrella. And we have a website where, you know, industry can go and all the information is at one website. All right. So, um, yeah, I want to talk about challenges that come to mind. Number one is, um, you know, the state has been up and down on, on developing a tech industry since John Burns, who originally had the idea to do that. And every governor since then, to various degrees, has tried to do that. But we still don't have a what you would call a robust tech industry in town. And um, the last, what do you want to call it, legislative statement on it uh, was in 2010, uh, where Linda Lingle killed the um, um, the, te the Tech Tax Credit, Act 221. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I, I remember lots of programs at the legislature, uh, which uh, celebrated uh, tech and tech companies in Hawaii, but not recently. And then I wonder where we are in terms of developing a tech industry that will attract attention, um, that will keep our students here after they graduate, uh, that will attract capital. What's the, what's the extent of that industry now? You, you've been looking at it from both sides of the coin. What are your thoughts? Yeah. So, you know, I think when we talk about a tech industry per se, you know, we're, there's Tech, the use of technology is ubiquitous now. Everyone uses technology. So it's difficult to say um, a tech industry where we have uh, companies that are doing software development or companies that are doing, um, you know, a hosting company. Um, but if you look at any organization, they use technology. Um, I'm going to say some of our largest employers uh, for people in technology are not tech companies, or you wouldn't think of them as tech companies. Um, an example would be my my former employer, Hawaii Pacific Health. You know, healthcare makes, you know, wide use of technology in a lot of different areas, not just in the administrative areas, but also in providing patient care. Um, you know, it's 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 allowed, um, you know, the process to be a lot more efficient, um, a lot, you know, higher quality, you know, and, and if you look at a bank, same thing. Banks are a heavy user of technology. Hawaiian Airlines, as an example, the airlines, they use technology. So when we talk about a tech industry, I don't think we can necessarily say, well, we have this company, you know, XYZ, and they're a technology company because they do software development. Um, you know, I think, it, and we do have companies like that. We have companies that, you know, specialize in working with software or networks or helping um, other companies, you know, run things in the cloud. Uh, we have managed service providers that provide tech support to small and mid-sized businesses. So we do have those companies also. But I, I would say probably some of our largest employers in tech are not, quote, technology companies. Yeah, you make me think of uh, the Manoa Innovation Center a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was on a, a strange kind of uh, um, reservation uh, interest by the university. And uh, it, it had its own independent uh, existence for 20 years or so, and then the university took it back. Um, but in that building uh, in Manoa, uh, there were a lot of these smaller tech companies developing one product, one service, and trying to hit it big time. I don't know. I don't know if that's still the case. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, to wit, the university itself. Um, you know, you have, sure, you have a computer science department and all that, but at the end of the day, every department has its own technology people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to have some um, data processing, so um, the, the faculty in that department with its uh, graduate students and all, they develop the data processing. They don't need to have, um, you know, uh, a, a separate computer science department because they all do it in-house. Everybody uses technology. Everybody, you know, can go and learn and and uh, and get the software and so forth. So I totally agree with you. Yeah. And so the answer then is my second challenge. My, my second challenge is these companies, the big ones, they come to town, they attend various career expositions and speed dating arrangements and what have you, 
um, and they hire uh, graduates of UH and other schools. And next thing you know is they're moving that graduate uh, from their, um, you know, their their branch here in Hawaii uh, to somewhere on the mainland. And so instead of having the benefit for our economy, um, we, we train the individual, put them through school or her, and then we wind up losing them to another branch of that same company on the mainland. Your thoughts? Um, you know, I, I'm sure that still happens. But, you know, one of the things that the pandemic really showed is that people could work remotely um, using technology. So, um, you know, I don't know to what degree, but, and you hear now people saying, well, we want our employees back in the office. But, you know, I know of um, many instances where people worked um, for a mainland company from Hawaii, uh, but they were working remotely. Um, and I think that's still the case. Um, you know, I think it's, um, it makes it more challenging for our local companies because now when they try to hire people um, or, or try to keep people, they're not just competing with other local companies. They are oftentimes competing with mainland companies who are telling people, you know, live in Hawaii, you know, but work for us remotely, you know, maybe work West Coast time. You know, I think they have to make some time adjustments, but otherwise, you know, enjoy your life in Hawaii and, you know, we'll, we'll pay you, um, commensurate wages as what we're paying, you know, our, our mainland employees. Um, you know, so I think that that's probably um, more of the challenge that we'll be seeing. Although I have heard still, I know of somebody who was with a company for 20 years, um, you know, good career, um, moved to the mainland because he was offered, I think, like 25% more pay. Yeah, well, you know, um, and what comes to my mind when you when you say that is uh, the Akamai uh, student and uh, young employee of a tech company maybe gets his job through um, you know the Tech Days program. When they try to move him, he can say no. He can just say no, mm -hmm. uh, and he can look around for a job here. And you know, I don't know the exact state of the law, but um, the covenant not to compete problem, I think, has been largely resolved here in Hawaii, yeah. um, and, and, uh, and it's being resolved on the mainland, too. There's some national movement to do away with covenants not to compete. Yeah. So the the, um, the tech company that tries to move him doesn't have that much leverage. If he's willing to take a Hawaii salary in lieu of a fancy salary in Silicon Valley, he can just say no. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a lot of people graduate UH and otherwise who actually would do that because they have they're committed to uh, paying it forward. They're committed to participating in the community and uh, in in the industry. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, there are, there is, there there's a group of young people in Hawaii who I think really want to try to um, help this next generation you know, to stay and live in Hawaii, but yet, you know, do well financially, you know, do have a decent wage, uh, but still stay in Hawaii. Um, and and the other thing I think is important to mention is, you know, our local companies are doing some interesting work in technology, you know, and that's part of what we're trying to do with these tech days of spring or fall is trying to inform um, students and not just our university students, but also the, the younger students in K-12 of some of the interesting things being done in the state by, you know, our, our local companies. Um, I, I There's another program that I'm involved with called LeapStart, and I had an employer tell me, you know, it's a travesty that these students don't know what we're doing in technology in Hawaii, and it's a travesty that we don't necessarily understand um, how good the students here in Hawaii are. Let's, let's talk about the students for a minute. Uh -huh. um, what, what kind of offerings can you um, provide to recruiters who come around and try to recruit uh, students from UH? And when it comes to mind, the computer science department, also all the sciences, I suppose, the engineering department for sure, because yeah. they've been involved in um, this kind of speed dating pro programs for a long time, right. I think. 
I, I think they still do that. And yeah, they do. Yeah, they have a really good, effective program. And then, of course, there's uh, the, the Scheidler College of Business, right? Which uh, talks about entrepreneurs. I mean, if you wanted to make some money, um, you want to get into a fast-moving, you know, sector like tech. Um, that would be a good thing to study, and it would be a good student um, to propose to a recruiter. But where are they coming from in the university? Yeah, I mean, from uh, UH Manoa, uh, you're right, it's ICS program, um, it's the engineering program, um, and then also Scheidler has an MIS uh, management information systems program, you know, which is computers, but more with a business bent to it. Um, you know, those would be the three main areas. Um, but to your point, you know, there's also marketing students, for example, in Scheidler that could double major marketing and, and um, MIS, you know, because marketing now, there's a lot of data being used, a lot of data analytics, you know, that drive marketing programs. A lot of the marketing is happening online now, you know, so if you had a knowledge of computers and marketing, you know, that's, that's a pretty good skill. And we're seeing that. I, I participated in some um, professional interaction nights and I went to the marketing uh, pin night. And, you know, there are quite a few double majors, marketing and MIS, but we also have all of our community colleges um, that have um, IT programs in different areas. We have UH West Oahu that, you know, has a really good um, cyber security and um, um, assurance program in the security privacy area. You know, so all of our campuses um, have different programs uh, geared towards um, information technology, tech, cybersecurity. What about filmmaking? Filmmaking, the Academy of Creative Media, I think, out at um, UH West Oahu. Yeah, that's another area. And we, we actually have students um, in that Leap Start program I mentioned um, that uh, came from that program, and we have them placed right now. Are doing some internships. Well, I'm beginning to get the idea, um, you know, that the Tech Days program is overarching. It's the umbrella. And um, your, your, your accepting enough, loose enough, um, to bring all of these other possibilities under that umbrella so that I don't have to go traipsing around from one career program to another I can just take a look at uh, Tech Days and find all kinds of possibilities for me there. Is that is that your you know is that your your direction? Yeah, I, I mean we want to um, you know again just build awareness so the students have an awareness of what's out there, um, and without having like you said to go to some very specific programs. Um, the other one that I want to mention is intelligence. Um, our first fair coming up this Friday is careers in tech and intelligence. So in, in the intelligence field, it includes the social sciences, it includes language, and we have, you know, the NSA and other um, employers from the government, you know, who are participating on Friday. Yeah, I know, I know one fellow who was interested in tech at UH, and he always, from the time he was a in swaddling clothes, he wanted to be in the CIA, <laughs> and and and, uh, and he studied what he thought was appropriate for that, and he he got into the CIA, um, and he works for the CIA today. I'm not going to tell you his name if you don't mind, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know there's some very exciting jobs uh, in intelligence. And for that matter, um, you know, State Department diplomacy jobs and law enforcement at the federal level, but also at the state level. Yeah. So there's some pretty sexy jobs out there that require this kind of mindset. So and what kind of mindset is it, though, actually, Alan? Yeah, um, you know, what should I be thinking about? What should I be studying? How should I direct my brain cells if I want to have an effective time and get an effective job at Tech Day? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm i glad you brought up the mindset, you know, because, um, you know, as we've been talking about technology is changing and morphing so rapidly, you know, what the specific technologies people are learning today in school will probably be different five years from now. But it's developing that mindset. You know, I think another term is like computational thinking, you know, where you, you look at a problem and you can break 
a big problem down into the component parts and then um, figure out you know how to solve the component parts and how things um, work you know in terms of a flow say of information you know that's a mindset you need and it's not so much technology but it's a way of looking at a problem and how do you break down that problem into parts and solve it you know critical thinking is you know what you know what I know I'm personally trying to promote you know and that's something you can start teaching in K to 12 um and and again it's not uh, technology specific but by doing for example like programming or doing something in technology you learn that because to program something you need to break it down into something that you can know what the steps are you know what steps follow what you know um if then you know decisions that have to be made so it helps develop that thinking now isn't that true i, I think you may be referring to stanford's uh, design design thinking it's where design you, thinking, your client yes. comes to you and says i want to do this and you say to your your client no you don't want to do this you want to do that mm -hmm. and you help him you know actually establish the the mission um, but speaking of missions, where does the military fit in all of this? I recall at one point the military was sending recruiters from the East Coast, some of the big bases on the East Coast to Hawaii, um, because they they really needed to have people who worked for all the military you know, units and facilities out here, and they couldn't find them. So they sent the recruiters out from there to here in order to recruit them. What what, what role does the military play in the program? You know, I, I think the military is um, a large employer. Um, so Department of Defense is a large employer, um, potentially of um, our students. And, you know, especially uh, with the um, increased focus on the whole Indo, Indo Pacific, you know, region, um, you know, there's not, not, and not just the military, but the contractors who support the military, um, you know, are, are in Hawaii. And I, you know, it's no secret that they're in Hawaii and they're looking for people um, with the right backgrounds. So I, I would say we, we have, um, there's a group that's part of Tech Days of Spring. So one, um, the um, Hawaii Defense Alliance is one of the overall co-sponsors. And with Hawaii Defense Alliance, um, there's a group called um, 3PI, a Pacific Intelligence Innovation Initiative. Um, so they're you know, part of this whole effort. I'd like to talk about the um, one other aspect of this intersection that is business and I guess military is another leg in the stool mm -hmm. and technology of various kinds uh, and orientations in the university. You know, one of, the, one of the things politically that has surfaced over the last couple of years, and, and for that matter, during the Trump administration, that we have an electorate that's not prepared. We have an electorate that doesn't understand the Constitution, doesn't understand the duties of the citizen um, to, you know, to uh, appreciate, to analyze, uh, to avoid disinformation and political misinformation. And, um, you know, I'm a little concerned that if you go through a pure technology science track at UH or elsewhere, maybe you're not skilled in your civic responsibilities. Um, where does that fit here? Because we want a generation that will do critical thinking, but not only in science, in social science. Where does that fit? You know, I think if you look at um, a four-year, so let's say you go for a four-year degree um, at the university or, you know, at, at any four-year program, you are going to get, you know, because you, it's not just going to focus on the science aspects, right? You, you take um, other subjects. Um, as a core, you know, so I think that helps helps provide some of that. Um, but it gets back again to the critical thinking. They need to apply that not just to their job, but to everything, right? To everything in life, you know, how you look at life. I had an employer tell me that they like the four-year program. So, you know, we've, we're having discussions of, um, is it okay to just hire somebody or can somebody right out of high school get a certificate and get a job in tech? You know, but an employer told me, you know, we like to have people from the four-year programs. One, it shows us that they have the wherewithal to complete the program, right? But then secondly, because they have a more well-rounded education and their thinking ability is developed more, 
uh, than someone who didn't go through those four years. And that's why they said, you know, when we look at um, hiring people, and this was about two years ago now, so they may have changed, but they said, when we look at hiring people, you know, we tend to look at the four-year degree uh, individuals. Sure. I mean, if I were um, if I were at the recruiting end of that, um, that is the, the tech days process, and I uh, looked at a, a resume, I looked at a um, some writing samples. I I looked at um, you know an interview, and I would I would make sure it's just me then. Uh, I would make sure that we included some evaluation of whether this individual was a well-rounded, um, educated person. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the problems is uh, you know uh, it, it, right now politics is so complex. But I would say to this this person, tell me what you think about the future of the country. Tell me what you think about democracy. Yeah. Tell me what you think about how the government works. Now, if he said, I'm sorry, I don't know that. I haven't studied that. I can't speak to that. I'm very shy. Um, then I would, I would be a little concerned that this is not the person I'm seeking. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I mean, that would be a good challenge question. Um, one of the things that employers have uh, told us is that they're not necessarily looking for the best technologists in an area, but they're looking for people who can think, um, who can communicate well, um, who can um, work with other people, you know, because no longer is it the case where, you know, you're a technologist and you just do a heads down on the computer and not work with anyone else. So they're looking for more, more of those types of skills. Uh, I don't know what you call it, 21st century skills, um, you know, professional skills, but um, you know, so that's that's what employers are looking for. They're looking for people, I think, who can think and who can communicate well. So yeah, and you talk about um, um, thinking and collaborating and being part of a team. Yes. Um, you know, we know, don't we, that the development of sophisticated technology, whether you're dedicated to that or whether it's for your company, which has a larger purpose, um, you're going to be working with teams. Yes. Uh, every technology company now, and and some technology companies, those teams are global. You may talk to uh, different continents at different times of the day in order to have the benefit of uh, global thinking. So yeah. that would also be part of my interview. Wouldn't it be part of yours? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, um, when I talk to people, I don't talk so much about the technology, but more about um life life skills and how they would approach things you know i think that's important how they would approach something a problem if you're presented with that so, so how does the market balance on this alan are there more applicants than we would like to see or that can be hired or less applicants are there more recruiting companies uh, than we would like to see or less how do you balance it so everybody feels they're getting you know some real benefit out of this uh, you know dating process if you will yeah you know i think there's um so what we're doing is we're working with an entry level person right and i think in most organizations that entry level person will go into certain areas and there's always exceptions you know where they might jump into not an entry level but you know a higher level position but um you know so when we look at the need overall, you know, there is a need for more tech people in general. I mean, everyone is saying that it's been published, you know, but I think when you look at the kinds of people, um, it may be that um, you have some entry level, but we have to remember that companies need that mid-level uh, manager or whatever um, to mentor the entry level. If they don't have that mid-level, then you know it's going to be hard for them to bring in more entry level because they have nobody to work with them, and especially with um, you know the baby boomers. I'm a baby boomer. Um, you know, getting to the point where they're leaving um, the job market. Um, you know, I think that's that's probably going to be a challenge. Um, you know, because companies you know need the resources, but they need people with enough experience uh, to be able to mentor and bring up those entry-level people coming into their into their employment. Yeah, it's hard because you've got to work both ends. You've got to lift all boats, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm reminded of a program that we did um, in the Hawaii Venture Capital Association 
um, back in the in the aught years, uh, involving one fellow who had been in the military, um, and then he uh, went to work for a hospitality company here in Hawaii. And his speech was stuck in my brain. It's that hospitality is our strongest suit. Um, and, we, you know, we have more experience, we have more boots on the ground with hospitality, running hotels and so forth, than anything else. And of course, that's data. That's data processing. It's marketing data processing. It's also operational data processing. There's, you know, it's any problem you could think of could be better handled um, with, with data processing. <clears throat> I, always, I always say that. Um, so... <laughs> So what he said, and it sticks in my brain, was here we are sitting, you know, right next to Waikiki in the, in the lap of the hospitality industry. We have to talk to those people and get them to understand that we can give them, you know, better technology, better programming, better results than anyone anywhere else because we live in, in this hospitality world. Are we doing that? What do we have to do to make the connection with hospitality? Mm. Oh, that's okay. So that's, I, I'm not familiar with the industry. So hard for me to say, but I, I do know that all of the um, hospitality companies, hotels have um, IT departments and they do, they do things computerized. Can they be doing more? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm going to guess, yeah, they can. Um, but on the other end, um, taking people from hospitality and having them work in technology, when you come, it, it's that experience you have dealing with people, communicating with people, um, problem solving with their, their um, guests, you know, are skills that can be leveraged in the technology industry. Um, so I know from that side, you know, I've, I've talked to companies and they said, yeah, you know, we're interested in people, you know, from the hospitality industry because they have that skill set already and we don't have to teach it. And, and oftentimes that's something that's really hard to teach, you know, like, uh, yeah, so, um, but yeah, I don't... Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, one, one thing that uh, strikes me is that um, we, can, we can talk to um, the hospitality and we can get closer to them and maybe even do something at the legislature to uh, incentivize the connection. Um, and I, you know, I think it's, it's probably also worth mentioning that, you know, in my experience in the military was that if you were an aviator, you were special and you would have a chance of being an admiral, a better chance. Okay? A ship driver was, you know, nearby, but not quite as, as, uh, as, pr as, as, as likely uh, as an aviator. Okay? Um, the other thing is in these big companies, and I'm thinking of big companies, national companies that have their offices here in Hawaii, uh, if you were a pencil pusher, uh, if you were an accountant, if you knew how to make a spreadsheet, uh, you had a better chance of becoming a, a senior officer or CEO. I could name names. Um, we would all know. Um, so I'm thinking in the future, as we evolve in the job market and in the way these corporations work, it seems to me that, um, that in a company which is heavily involved in data processing, the guy who understands the programming, who understands the connectivity between the various parts of the company through computers, through telecommunications and computers and the like, that person, if not now, then soon, will have a better chance at becoming a senior officer. Not necessarily to, you know, to do the scut work of programming, but to do the critical thinking at the senior level or CEO level. Your thoughts? Um, I would agree. Um, I might be biased because of my background, but <laughs> yeah, I, I agree that when you're, um, especially if you're like a, you know, director or chief information officer in an organization, you have a whole view of the company because you need to understand the whole company and how it works for you to automate and computerize and put in, um, you know, systems in the company and to improve, you know, how the company can work with systems. 
Um, and that gives you a really good broad view of the organization that would, could be leveraged um, uh, to move up to like a CEO position. And, um, you know, David Lassner, I mean, David was the CIO of the UH system before. Good example. Yeah. Good example. So uh, here we are, um, and we want to make this umbrella as wide and broad and effective as possible. It's a great place to be at the university. I mean, the university is a perfect venue for all of that. Bring everyone in, in um, from both sides of the equation. Um, and the question I, I put to you is, uh, you know, what can we, the community, including the government, um, do to help you make that umbrella bigger, more effective, and make good careers for those uh, graduates uh, and and build a what do you want to call it? Not not I'll change my, my way of putting this. Not a tech industry, but a tech awareness, a tech element in in our economy. Mm -hmm. We have to do that because our economy is better with more tech. Mm -hmm. I remember a bumper sticker um, back in the '90s which said, "Have you hugged your programmer today?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, and I'm not I'm not advancing that idea. That's that's old news. But I'm I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about what the community can do to help you, um, you know, in this project, uh, in this day's project. Yeah, I I would say um, engage with educators, um, and when I say educators, not just um, you know faculty at the university or universities, but also with your K to twelve, you know, DOE educators, computer science, um, CTE educators, um, you know, because the educators need to understand uh, what technology is out there and how it's being used for them to be able to communicate to the students, right? And all of this is awareness, right? I mean, building awareness of the students, but to do that, if you communicate with the educators, it can help communicate that down. Um, and then, you know, I think for businesses to be open to doing internships, uh, one of the things that, um, you know, we're, one of the feedback in one of the studies was that um, oftentimes the um, students, you know, who recently graduate have the technical knowledge, but they don't necessarily know how to apply that to solve problems in an organization. And the way you get that is by experience. So if more companies are open to doing internships, um, having students come in, um, you know, I'm working with them so they learn something, you know, I think it will help them to eventually be good employees for companies in, in Hawaii. Well, Alan, we're we're here to help. And Thank if you, you uh, want to present any of the people involved in these programs on any side of that coin, uh, please let us know, because uh, I think part of this is to um, raise public awareness in general. That's what we do, and we, we care a lot about um, raising it in terms of technology. Alan Ito, University of Hawaii, uh, organizing Tech Days of Spring at UH. Thank you so much for coming on and for helping us understand what is happening and what could happen. Thank you, Jay. And everyone, please attend the Tech Days of Spring events. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Aloha.